Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Friday, December 1st, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin a new year of these uh, daily video devotions, and we're going to structure our readings this year uh, around the daily lectionary. The daily lectionary you can find in the beginning of our new hymnal, um, and it is a, a series of readings that gives us a psalm, an Old Testament reading, and a New Testament reading each day. The Old Testament and New Testament readings will both be about 15 to 25 verses each day, and through um, uh, through reading through this daily, lec daily lectionary, we'll get through almost all of the New Testament in a year and about a third of the Old Testament. We're also going to be focusing on a core of Psalms. So we'll be using these Psalms uh, throughout the year, and some of them may uh, be repeated several times, especially during those uh, green seasons, the Epiphany season and the uh, Pentecost seasons uh, that are kind of the, take up a large part of each church year. So today we are beginning with the reading for December 1st. Our psalm for today is going to be Psalm 51. Psalm 51. For the choir director, a psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him after he had gone to Bathsheba. Be gracious to me, God, according to your faithful love. According to your abundant compassion, blot out my rebellion. Completely wash away my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. For I am conscious of my rebellion and my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, I have sinned and done this evil in your sight. So you are right when you pass sentence. You are blameless when you judge. Indeed, I was guilty when I was born. I was sinful when my mother conceived me. Surely you desire integrity in the inner self, and you teach me wisdom deep within. Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Turn your face away from my sins and blot out all my guilt. God, create a clean heart for me and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore the joy of your salvation to me and sustain me by giving me a willing spirit. Then I will teach the rebellious your ways and sinners will return to you. Save me from the guilt of bloodshed, God, God of my salvation and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not want a sacrifice, or I would give it. You are not pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifice pleasing to God is a broken spirit. You will not despise a broken and humbled heart, God. In your good pleasure, cause Zion to prosper. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Our Old Testament reading is going to pick up in Isaiah chapter 7. Here, um, Isaiah is going to be interacting with King Ahaz and uh, going to give Ahaz the opportunity to ask the Lord for a sign. Ahaz, in a false show of humility, is going to refuse that. And so the Lord is going to give Ahaz a sign anyway. And it is a sign that prophesies the virgin birth of our Savior. Then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz. Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. It can be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz replied, I will not ask. I will not test the Lord. Isaiah said, Listen, house of David, is it not enough for you to try the patience of men? 
Will you also try the patience of my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. By the time he learns to reject what is bad and choose what is good, he will be eating curds and honey. For before the boy knows to reject what is bad and choose what is good, the land of the two kings you dread will be abandoned. The Lord will bring on you, your people, and your father's house such a time as has never been seen since has never been since Ephraim separated from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. On that day, the Lord will whistle to flies from at the farthest streams of the Nile and to bees in the land of Assyria. All of them will come and settle in the steep ravines, in the clefts of the rocks, in all the thorn bushes, and in all the water holes. On that day, the Lord will use a razor hired from beyond the Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, to shave the hair on your heads, the hair on your legs, and even your beards. On that day, a man will raise a young cow and two sheep, and from the abundant milk they give, he will eat curds, for every survivor in the land will eat curds and honey. And on that day, every place where there were a thousand vines worth a thousand pieces of silver will become thorns and briars. A man will go there with bow and arrows, because the whole land will be thorns and briars. You will not go to all the hills that were once tilled with a hoe, for fear of the thorns and briars. Those hills will be places for oxen to graze and for sheep to trample. Then the Lord said to me, Take a large piece of parchment and write on it with an ordinary pen, Maher Shalal Chashbaz. I have appointed trustworthy witnesses, the priest Uriah and Zechariah, son of Jeber Jeberachiah. I was then intimate with the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. The Lord said to me, Name him Maher Shalal Chashbaz. For before the boy knows how to call father or mother, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria will be carried off to the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again. Because these people rejected the slowly flowing water of Shiloah and rejoiced with reason and the son of Remaliah, the Lord will certainly bring against them the mighty rushing water of the Euphrates River the king of Assyria, and all his glory. It will overflow its channels and spill over all its banks. It will pour into Judah, flood over it, and sweep through, reaching up to the neck, and its flooded banks will fill your entire land, Emmanuel. For our New Testament reading, we jump into Peter's first letter. And in uh, chapter 3, which will be our reading for today, he gives encouragement to husbands and wives and also general encouragement to all of God's people as they live their lives as God's people in this world. In the same way, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that, even if some disobey the word, they may be won over without a word by the way their wives live when they observe your pure, reverent lives. Don't let your beauty consist of outward things like elaborate hairstyles and wearing gold jewelry or fine clothes, but rather what is inside the heart, the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For in the past, the holy women who put their hope in God also adorned themselves in this way, submitting to their own husbands just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. You have become her children when you do what is good and do not fear any intimidation. Husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way, as with a weaker partner, showing them honor as co-heirs of the grace of life, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Finally, all of you be like-minded and sympathetic, Love one another, and be compassionate and humble, not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but, on the contrary, giving a blessing, 
since you were called for this, so that you may inherit a blessing. For the one who wants to love life and to see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit, and let him turn away from evil and do what is good. Let him seek peace and pursue it, because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do what is evil. Who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear them or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in the past were disobedient, when God patiently waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared. In it a few, that is, eight people, were saved through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.